We should be getting this match underway shortly. And here we have our two players on the left. It is Pedro Eugenio Torres, one of the breakout stars of the last two seasons here in the Pokemon TCG. He won an international championship last season. He's made top eight at a couple of them, uh, even top four in Brazil this year. Yeah. He's been on quite a streak, one of the top players in the Europe region and even won uh, an expanded regional this year in Europe. So he's on fire. Yeah, uh, just basically a jack of all trades, uh, really switching up the decks he chooses to play too. Really just knows Pokemon as a game. Yeah, uh, not afraid to take chances as he is playing Rayquaza GX and his opponent, Alessandro Cremascoli um, from Italy. You know, he started the day off 4-0 and after that took a loss, took a tie. And now he's sitting at 4-1-1, one, and one, finds himself needing to win his final round to perhaps make it to the top eight of the World Championship. So that's got to be on his mind with such a strong start, 4-0, and oh, and then falling backwards a little bit. You know, it's got to be very nerve-wracking to be in this position. Yeah, and so I spoke of Rayquaza before. Pedro's actually playing Rayquaza GX, and he's playing a very unique version of it. We haven't really seen much from anyone else. Meanwhile, Alessandro is playing the good old Buzzswole Garbodor that we've been seeing all weekend long. And oh my goodness, look at that, Jeremy. That's that Garbotoxin oh. Garbodor so, in his prize cards. One thing of note, Pedro plays a Zerkatry GX. <laughs> Zerkatry GX has a pretty nice ability, doesn't it, Kyle? Yeah, it uh, cannot be damaged by Pokemon that have special energy attached to them. And you know what? Alessandro plays zero basic energy cards in his deck. So we could see an interesting interaction where Zerkatry GX completely walls Alessandro's deck and Pedro could win just by using that one Ultra Beast. Yeah, usually you're fine. You're like, I play Garbotoxin Garbodor. I don't need to worry about abilities. But with it being in the prizes and being in the top part of the prizes as well. Yeah, it's very unlikely that he'll get to it. Uh, that being said, it is a risky strategy when your opponent has Trubbish in play. You never know if your opponent has Garbotoxin, Garbodor in their deck. Uh, a lot of players this weekend don't even have it. They're just using Trash Lanch. So it certainly is risky. I mean, you could play this whole game built around Zerkatry not getting knocked out, and then your opponent just goes Garbotoxin, Float Stone, knock out your guy, uh, and then your whole plan is ruined. You basically lose. So we'll see if Pedro wants to go that route it looks like he is not he's starting off with the rayquaza gx and uh, as you said it is quite an unusual list one we have not seen yet yeah so he starts off with mysterious treasure discarding a lightning <laughs> energy and here is one of the differences he actually plays four puzzle of time yeah pedro has no fear of trash lanch at all <laughs> uh, he is playing so many item cards in his deck it's ridiculous he only plays nine supporters yeah, and uh, only six of them, or five, five of them, actually draw cards. Yeah. Uh, he's playing all sorts of items. Mysterious Treasure, Ultra Ball, Acrobike, Puzzle of Time. He's got Max Elixirs, and then the typical stuff like Field Blower, Rescue Stretcher, Float Stone, that kind of stuff. But we're getting <laughs> into the Escape Rope as well. <laughs> yep, he's got an Escape Rope, too. He's actually going to play it on his first turn. So going to throw Alessandro off balance to start this game. And, man, he's got... It's got to be close to, like, 30 items in his deck. Yeah, uh, really no fear at all, and it's crazy to think that you would do that in a format where everyone is playing Garboder. Yeah, especially fresh off the North America International Championships where Trash Lanch made a resurgence. Uh, oh, you see what I see, Kyle? I see a lot of stuff. I see <laughs> the circuitry, uh, the rainbow circuitry, and I also see a Marshadow with Let Loose. So this is just all the crazy stuff that Pedro's trying to pull off with this deck. Yeah, so attach energy for the turn. That is right. He didn't attach for the turn yet. Yeah. Free energy turn one. Rayquaza GX is a powerful GX Pokemon. Yep. And he's trying to debate playing down more cards here. Uh, has the Zerkatry and says, uh, you know what? I don't want to do it. Just passes the turn. All right. Action is back on Alessandro now. Floatstone on the active and just a Cynthia to start his turn here. Floatstone, pretty good but he's going to need to cobble together a few things to get a, a set up against this fully powered Rayquaza. 
Yeah, so this uh, Buzzwell Garboder deck has certainly been the breakout deck here at the World Championships. Uh, it destroyed the competition yesterday in day one, and now day two, it's having more strong performances. Uh, we'll see exactly how many make it to top eight, but I know there's a lot of them in contention for doing so. Oh, well, and there's one card that might pull the matchup towards Alessandro's favor, Shrine of Punishments. A pretty good card against a deck that plays almost all GX Pokemon. Yes, uh, it's not bad. And so we see double Trubbish right now for Alessandro, and he's getting Nest Ball. Uh, I actually wonder if it's worth going for Buzzwall at all in this matchup, if you should just be trying to trash Lance your opponent from the beginning. Uh, Pedro has already put at least four or five items in his discard pile, so trash Lance is going to be better than Sledgehammer ever would be. Yeah, and I think he agrees with you, getting that third Trubbish down. And remember, this is his first search of the game. He's now seeing, oh, no. I, I got a Garbator, Garbatoxin prize. And so we'll see what happens here for Alessandro. Um, he's probably not going to be able to do anything super relevant in uh, the first game here. Oh, he's actually looking the to first change turn. his mind here. Buzzwool coming down instead of the Trubbish. Might just be because it's a better attacker for uh, strong energies drawing into it because you can only really attack with the other one with rainbow it kind of limits your actual options throughout the game but no we just see a retreat to the buzzwool and then a pass with the shrine in play yeah so uh no attachment for the turn for alessandro and he's gonna have to pass it over to pedro does get the shrine of punishment which as you said is going to be huge uh just that chip damage adding up turn after turn and um, I mean it depends on how many ways Pedro has to to get rid of that trying to punishment you know there's not really a great stadium card to put in this deck sometimes players are using parallel city or uh, uh, earlier yesterday we saw champions festival yeah exactly for this right yeah you can heal off the shrine of punishment damage but oh no we actually see ultra ball discarding the Zerka tree GX it is hitting the bin uh, looking not really to utilize it because it is weak to that Buzzwool, and if a Garbodor does come down, it's pretty bad for him. Yeah, and you can see Pedro not wanting to take the risk. Uh, at this point in the tournament, you kind of know what everybody else is playing. You probably heard some rumors, uh, and you probably have heard that Alessandro is playing Garbotox and Garbodor in his deck. So uh, this is where having that information can almost backfire because if he had just blindly put out Zerkatry and said, you don't play any basic energy. Um, they was prized in this game, and he could have won just by putting Zerkatry out, but uh, Pedro is too smart <laughs> yeah. and uh, does not want to walk into it. So, All right, so Ultra Ball gets the Orangaroo from Sun and Moon, that Instruct ability just so critical in a deck that doesn't really play Octillery, can't play Zorark. Yeah, it's just all basic Pokemon trying to storm the opponent as quickly as possible oh yeah i love the puns keep them going <laughs> kyle keep them going shout out to dj wits <laughs> <laughs> miss you buddy <laughs> all right sycamore coming down discarding marshadow and another ultra ball oh man look at that so many <laughs> max elixirs so many max elixirs acrobike look at that two energy <laughs> just discard one get the other one to your hand who cares no. You do need grass and lightning, so this is sometimes a relevant choice. Uh, Got to make sure you have both of them to attack with that dragon break attack. I have yet to run in uh, to a situation where they max elixir hidden energy, but it's not the one they need. <laughs> yeah. uh, they usually just have it anyway. Yeah. All right, max elixir does hit, attaching that grass energy to the bench Rayquaza GX. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's up to five energy at this point. Six. See? It doesn't matter. It keeps going. Uh, this deck does one thing very well, and that's get energy in play. <laughs> yes, uh, and do loads of damage very quickly. Uh, one thing it does not do very well is survive attacks from Trash Avalanche. <laughs> so even though Pedro on his second turn here is going to be bursting with tons of energy, look at that. There's already. Uh, seven on board. That's a 210 damage on the second turn. Yeah, and he can do that. Zorark. He can do that every single turn. The problem is he's got like 15 items in his discard pile. So if Alessandro simply goes Trash Lanch, Garboder, Rainbow Energy, Trash Lanch, that's a two-price swing. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, that is pretty insane. Uh, it does take maybe a little bit more. He has to find the Garboder. He has to find the Rainbow Energy. But we'll have to see. Yeah, he's, all, he's already got two Garboder in play. Finds the first Rainbow Energy. So this is going to be an easy Trash Lanch knockout. Uh, all Pedro can really do in this matchup is attack and cross his fingers, right? He plays too many items to really play around Trash Lanch especially because you have to use stormy winds. You're going to discard cards. You're going to discard items anyway. So you just attack and say, please don't have it. <laughs> yeah, you you're never have the chance. Uh, he doesn't play the Latias uh, Prism, which might have some sort of game against it, but he's an all-in deck. Yeah. So it looks like Alessandro is going to Ultra Ball for Buzz Bowl. Uh, so even though Trash Lanch is better for the most part, there is a point in the game where you can Sledgehammer for a knockout and uh, save one of your trash lands garboder for later. Yeah, anytime you can sledgehammer for 120 for one energy, uh, you, you never really want to pass that up. Yeah, and with the Shrine of Punishment staying out there, uh, it's going to be an easy sledgehammer knockout. All right, so we see a retreat from the ringer with the float zone and a trash lanch, which I believe uh, Kenny classified it before as the official number is enough. Yes. <laughs> Somewhere between 200 and 8,000 damage. <laughs> Essentially the same amount of regionals Michael Pramont has won. <laughs> uh, so now Pedro is in a tough spot. I mean, what do you do? You have to send out a Rayquaza, right? That's all your deck does. Yeah. Uh, it is extremely linear. It has no alternate wind conditions or anything like that. You just put energy on Rayquaza, you attack, and you hope it's enough. Sometimes it's just not enough. Uh, sometimes your opponent has all non-GX Pokemon, and there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah, his only hope right here is hope Alessandro does not have a rainbow energy or even just a strong energy. A strong energy will take a knockout as well. All right, so we see all the items fanned out uh, so we can make sure there's enough for the trash lanch knockout. Uh, Alessandro just has not missed a beat this game. You know, with these non-GX decks, sometimes you can miss things, right? You need to constantly replenish your attackers, and it's very easy to miss at some point. You need to keep getting the Trash Lanch Garboder. You need to find the Rainbow Energy. Uh, you need to find the Strong Energy when you need it. And sometimes it's just tough to do that. But so far, it has not been an issue. And um, the fact that Pedro has only knocked out two Pokemon so far, and Alessandro is going to be in a game-winning position next turn. Yeah. Uh, that helps a little bit because it, it's really less of a strain on his resources. Yeah, Choice Band coming down on that Buzzswole means that it's just knocking out uh, Rayquaza cleanly. It does 180 damage with Sledgehammer right now. And it, there is the Cynthia drawing a s brand new hand of six cards. Yep. Alessandro at this point basically just needs to find a Rainbow Energy and he wins the game next turn. And the special charge is a card to help with that, being able to shuffle in two special energies from his discard pile into his deck. They're very slippy when they're new. So there we go. Special charge. Looks like he has the Ultra Ball as well, just thinning out his hand, making sure he has some game against maybe an N, or which we know <laughs> Pedro doesn't actually play N. Yeah. He does have that Marshadow with Let Loose. Yeah, Pedro's list's very unusual. His only supporter cards are Professor Sycamore, Guzma, and Lily. No N, no Cynthia, uh, not wasting any time with that stuff. He's just trying to attack turn two, maybe even turn one sometimes, and uh, overrun his opponents. I'm sure he has done that a lot today. Uh, we've seen plenty of decks and players succumb to the early pressure of Rayquaza GX, and uh, if you miss a beat at all, you know, you can just fall behind against this deck. Yeah, exactly. It looks like there is some sort of judge ruling going on in our match right now. Yeah, so we'll get worried about what this is shortly. Uh, looks like Alessandro is in firm control of the first game. And uh, Pedro, I think he realizes this is not a very good matchup for him. You know, when you come into a tournament like the World Championships, you know you're going up against the best of the best. And uh, sometimes you just have to take risks with your deck choice. And you might say, you know what? I think I'm going to run into a bunch of Zorark decks, so I'm just going to play this Rayquaza deck and hope it all works out. And if I happen to run into Trash Lanch decks, well, 
That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get matched up with bad matchups and uh, you end up losing. Yeah, and honestly, you could just catch them stumbling a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also why we see the Zerkatry GX in there to kind of make that matchup a little bit better. Yeah. Sometimes you can steal some games. Uh, oh, it looks like our fly correspondent is <laughs> still in the playmat <laughs> area. Oh, yeah, he's hanging out where he belongs at Buzzwolves. <laughs> Man, so. what a uh, just high, intense match going on right now. Wow, that fly is the MVP just landed on the head. There's two of them. There's, <laughs> there's two of them. Two flies. Wow. This is incredible. <laughs> uh, so uh, we are pausing the match shortly uh, to get a judge ruling on a potential issue here. So hopefully we'll get that resolved quickly. Uh, right now, Jeremy, it looks like Alessandro is crushing his first game. Uh, and it looks like a horrendous matchup for Pedro. I mean, do you think there's anything Pedro can do? Uh, have him prize Garbatoxin again, know about it, and then just start <laughs> Zerkatry. Yeah. Hope your opponent plays Town Map and reveals <laughs> yeah. their prizes to you. <laughs> uh, it, it, it seems super rough. Uh, he plays three of the Trashlands Garboder. Yeah. And um, maybe hope he has a hand of, like, special charge and two rainbow and has to sycamore it away. Yeah, something like that. Basically, Alessandro just has to draw very poorly. Yeah. Um, which can happen. I mean, we've seen that happen plenty of times. I mean, round one yesterday, we saw Aaron Tarbo playing a Sylveon Gardevoir deck against Rayquaza and just destroyed the first game because everything's weak to fairy. And then games two and three, he drew nothing and just got knocked out turn two. <laughs> And that's how Pokemon goes sometimes. Yeah. The variance in the game uh, leads to some games like that, which is unfortunate, but it also creates some amazing matches. Yep. So um, we do have a bit of an issue. Um, there might be a potential deck list error here. We're waiting to see what the, the resolution is going to be. Uh, you never really know how these things are going to play out. Yeah. So we don't want to speculate quite yet, but that is the issue that we're trying to resolve at this point. Hopefully, it'll uh, get get taken care of soon. Uh, the head judge is getting involved. We're seeing what's going to go on. But uh, in the meantime, we can talk about some of the other matchups we have in the final round. Uh, we said Eric Smith is probably the one player who's guaranteed to make it uh, into the top eight at this point. With 16 match points, he can probably intentional draw, get to 17. So we'll probably have at least one Rayquaza GX deck in the top eight, which uh, was a very polarizing deck, I think. Yeah. It was the most hyped card coming from Celestial Storm. Uh, it won the Japanese National Championships by Takuya Yoneda. And once not, the cards... Not only won, it pretty much took over the top eight, right? Yeah. And then once the cards came out and people started playtesting, a lot of people were like, oh, this card's bad. <laughs> Why are we even playing this? It's not good at all. I've heard a lot of people back here be like, I've watched people play Rayquaza. I feel bad. <laughs> you only do one thing. Yeah. But it does that one thing very well. Yep. It's uh, it's pretty much like every other Rayquaza. It just comes in for a giant burst of damage and it either works or it fails miserably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's uh, like Mega Rayquaza where, you know, if you went Skyfield, fill up your whole bench, do 200 damage or whatever. Uh, whenever you did that, you were feeling great. And then the other times, you're like, I don't have Skyfield. Where you start chaining, <laughs> don't have Skyfield, yeah. you don't have the Spirit Link, have to end your yeah, turn when exactly. you Mega Evolve. Yeah, like, got everything, didn't get Mega Turbo. Yeah, but uh, Rayquaza kind of took over uh, Malamar from, like, the triangle of decks yes. that people were testing. And so far, it seems to be doing well for some of the players here. Uh, still kind of seems like a pretty rough matchup against this Buzzwell Garboder deck. Uh, really just Trash Lanch in general. Yeah, it sure seems like it. But, I mean, players like Pedro and Eric have been able to overcome whatever's in their path. Yeah. So I'm sure it can't be that bad. Uh, it seems like we do have a backup match while we have this ruling in progress. So we're going to jump over to the side stream where we actually have Christopher Shemansky against Martin Yanus. Uh, who is playing Greninja Break. Yeah, uh, like I said before, this deck does not want to go away. <laughs> uh, Greninja, one of the most resilient cards to come out for a while now. And it's a deck that's really never changed up too much. Yeah, and talk about taking a gamble at the World Championships. Greninja is one of the riskiest decks you can play in the Pokemon TCG. 
Uh, it, when everything works, it is one of the best decks maybe ever. <laughs> when yeah. you, which is pretty exciting. Uh, I do want to see Pedro's deck in action again just to see how much stuff he can do in a single turn. I want to see how many puzzle of times he mills. <laughs> uh, so far, we got to see one. Yeah. Uh, so if you're playing along at home, keep a counter with you. Yeah, I want to see how many times he can play puzzle of time. That's probably a better counter to keep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so far, it's zero. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it should be interesting. Uh, again, Pedro playing that Rayquaza GX deck full of all sorts of item cards, Acrobike, Puzzle of Time. I'm happy Acrobike's making a comeback, a <laughs> card that's been out of the format for a little bit, but with Celestial Storm reprinting it, yep. uh, trying to make a splash, but it's not very well poised against Trash Land. <laughs> no, not at all. And uh, it, it certainly fits the spirit of the Rayquaza deck where you're just like, I don't care what I discard, <laughs> I'm just going to grab everything. Uh, so you... Acrobike is another very risky card where it's like, if you see two good cards, you're like, whoops, <laughs> one of these is going away. But uh, if you're already playing Rayquaza and using Stormy Winds, you're like, ah, I don't really care what I mill anyway. I just need to get these guys out and a bunch of energy. Who cares what else I discard? Yeah, and then uh, I I've always had trouble with Acrobike, especially I think Night March was the deck I played mm -hmm. in the most, where I'd Acrobike look at my top two cards and it's two double colorless yep. energy. It's classic, yep. Or like the last two Pokemon you need or something. It, it always is a disaster, yeah. Are you Acrobike, two Puzzle of Time? <laughs> that could happen. Yeah. We could see that here. Mm -hmm. yeah, anything can happen with Acrobike. Uh, of course, it is a powerful item card. It lets you dig through your deck faster. Uh, and importantly, it gets energy in the discard so that when you do use Stormy Winds, you can always guarantee getting the energy off of it. So that's why you play it in the Rayquaza deck. But yeah. Pedro just doesn't care. He's just fine taking risks here, trying to burn through his deck as quickly as possible. And we'll see if he can do that and overcome this trash -a -lanch strategy from Alessandro, which is almost the direct counter to this deck. Yeah, uh, and it's actually pretty fortunate for him that uh, an error like this happened because yeah. he was getting just dominated that game. He had no chance to win that first game. All right, uh, so we actually got some confirmation he, so he did put four double colorless energy on his deck list instead of the strong energy, but he was able to replace them with basic fighting energy. Mm, that's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, <laughs> it still has a little bit of play, but he won't have that extra boost from strong energy. That's funny. That kind of changes the matchup. Now he has basic energy for Zerkatry. <laughs> oh, man. That, that, that could be huge, actually. Uh, it reminds me of... Oh, man, I don't remember which Nationals it is, but Oscar Morales uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't write down something on his deck. I think Pokemon, Pokemon Catcher, Catcher yep. had to replace all four with basic energy, but then he went 9-0 and o because he had more basic energy to just max potion away. Yeah. <laughs> He's pulling off Night Spears and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I can max potion this Knight's, uh, this Dark Eye with three energy because I could just attach three energy again. Oh, don't worry, Jeremy. Circuitry is prized. All right, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> It right, looks like we are going to resume this round seven match. Uh, this has to be jarring for both players being just uh, interrupted completely by this uh, ruling that we had to address. And now they have to resume play. It yeah, looks I, like we're jumping back in, though. I actually think Alessandro has a better matchup now <laughs> against Pedro just because of the basic fightings. Yeah. I mean, it makes his math with Sledgehammer a lot worse. Right? You can't go, like, strong energy choice band, Sledgehammer for 180 or whatever with the Shrine of Punishment. So it makes it slightly worse, but it probably won't make any difference. Well, yeah, we saw Shrine of Punishment just stick down on the field and not go away. So if that happens again, you don't really need that extra damage. Yep. Flips. Yes, we do see Pedro is up 1-0 to zero in this series in a terrible matchup for him, and we have... About 36 minutes left in the round. We had a massive time extension yeah. uh, for this deck list issue. So we will most likely see this match conclude. And we'll see if Pedro can kind of steal a game and uh, over, uh, over from one. Alessandro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So Alessandro's, Alessandro's turn one was pretty good. Floatstone on that Trubbish. Cynthia into a Buzzswole and another Trubbish getting the rainbow as well. So threatening both Garbotoxin and a Trash Lanch. Oops. Pedro I mean, does start off with an Ultra Ball, and he's actually looking to see how many Puzzle of Time are in his deck. Yeah. Uh, it uh, like it's very important to do. <laughs> looks like three. Three? All right. That means he can discard one, and it'd still be fine. Yeah. 
And it looks like he's eyeing up that Lily. This is one thing I actually love that Pedro does is he'll go through his deck probably about three times. But during those times, he'll, he'll pull forward, like, or at least push, push up the important cards that he identifies in a matchup. Yeah. It uh, looks like his card of choice is going to be Rayquaza GX. Already got a couple energy in the discard pile. You can use Stormy Winds. Hopefully, don't discard three items. Yeah. And uh, get a basic energy into play. All right. Stormy Winds <laughs> discarding the three. No items. Woo. That, that's as much as you can ask for. Discarding the Guzma and that Marshadow, though. Yeah, it's not bad, though. And I think he is trying to get a turn one attack. He's fully committing to that benched Rayquaza GX, hoping to find a Max Elixir, Floatstone. Oh, he's got some acro bikes. Are those the cards you want to be playing against Trash Lamp? <laughs> See any items? He's got one, right? The ultra yeah, ball? The, the Ultra Ball, because he discarded the two basic grass. So yeah, two Acrobikes in his hand. Ops not to play him, and there we see a pass of the turn. Alessandro draws that Nest Ball, plays it immediately. Could be eyeing down maybe another Trubbish. Yeah, uh, it looked like in the first game that's exactly what he was doing. Just going for as much trash lanch as he could, but no, it looks like Diancy Prism Star. So he's going to try to put on some pressure with that sledgehammer. Got to make up for the 20 damage missing somehow. <laughs> yeah. He still has a beast energy. He does, but it is, isn't in the prizes. Ah, that's true. <laughs> he does not have a beast energy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fresh six cards from Alessandro with Cynthia, one of the best supporters in the game right now. Yeah. Actually seeing a pretty good hand from him. No way to actually retreat the active but does have the rainbow to start attacking and the choice ban too yeah, it's still a nice 80 damage you who that, needs strong energy yeah you get that uh shrine of punishment going and it'll add up to a knockout very quickly so pedro action, does action back on pedro yeah he does have escape rope in his hand if he wants to play it here and uh, it looks like he has to play acrobike Oh, oh, that's a pretty good acrobike. I know what I want to discard. So, oh no! Yeah, he doesn't have a lightning <laughs> in his hand. Oh man, this this is what you worry about, right? Yep. Uh, you need both grass and lightning energy to use Dragon Break. Pedro discards the Rayquaza. Oh my goodness! Look at that. And he's gonna play this escape rope, and say, "Hey, which Pokemon do you want to bring up?" Oh, it's Buzzwell Darn. <laughs> really hoping it would be that Garboder. All right, but only three energy in play. That is 90 damage with Dragon Break. That's not enough to take a knockout here, and I don't know if he really wants to play anything else to advance his board state. Yeah, he could press a little further, but he looks it looks like he's happy to just Dragon Break for 90. Uh, and you can see just the sheer presence of the Trash Lance Garboder has completely changed Pedro's game plan. And, oh, he's going to be thrilled with this. His opponent plays an N. He gets to shuffle all those items back into his deck and maybe draw some better cards. Or maybe draw some items. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably draw at least a few. Yeah, it'll definitely be a beneficial end for Pedro here. Uh, maybe drawing into a Guzma to try and target down that Garboder on the bench. Definitely, that has to be uh, priority number one. Get rid of those trash lanch Garboder. We see the basic fighting energy. There we go. You got to do it somehow. He is doing a 50 damage thanks to that Diancy Prism Star, but has the Float Stone. A quick retreat to that bus wall on the bench, so now you're doing 80 thanks to that Choice Band. Yep. And uh, the Princess cheering you on from the bench, the Diancy Prism Star. <laughs> It is probably the best cheerleader Pokemon has ever made. Move <laughs> over, Oricorio. <laughs> yeah. Plus and Minin cheering each other on, but no, nope, they don't bad. add. They don't add twenty damage to your fighting Pokemon's attacks. So right now, Pedro only has three energy in play. He's going to need some way to get an extra one out, and then attach for the turn if he wants to Dragon Break. Well, he does, he does have that Max Elixir in his hand, although he has quite a few energy in hand as well. I'm oh, sorry, and there's actually already 10 on Buzzball from the Rainbow, so just an attachment for the turn will do it. And there we see an attachment on the Oranguru, actually. Yeah. 
and choosing not to play that max elixir just because it puts another item in the discard. Yeah, Pedro doing whatever he can in this situation. There's only three items in there, but... Caps at 60 damage, 90 with a choice band. Still not enough, but a Shrine of Punishments could change that. Yeah, Shrine of Punishment or Field Blower. Uh, well, never mind. Alessandro doesn't play Field Blower. <laughs> So, yeah, it would have to be Shrine of Punishment and the Choice Band. I think if you at least get the Choice Band, that's good enough because next turn you can, I mean, at any point you can get the Shrine of Punishment, yeah. right? That, uh, that 10 is going to hit them eventually. And thankfully for Alessandro, he did get that Choice Band off that Professor Sycamore. Uh, does it? Yeah, he has the Floatstone on the active, so he does have a way to retreat. Yeah, I could also see just using Sledgehammer here. Setting up for the knockout on the next turn. Definitely thinking about it. And yeah, there you go. Sledgehammer for 50. Yep, so this is not looking great for Pedro. Um, he took the first knockout, but he doesn't have a ton of energy in play. He's going to hit a point where he's got to play item cards. And then once that happens, Trash Alanche is going to destroy everything in its path. Uh, he... And to discard the one Rayquaza GX earlier. Look at his hand. It's all items. Yeah, it might have to be this turn when he decides Ugh. to do that. Yeah, he's probably got at least Rescue Stretcher for another Rayquaza. Yeah, uh, the only attacker on the board is that Ray with 130 on it. So he really needs these Max Elixirs to hit as well. And... <laughs> no, <Just> no, no, no. <laughs> finger waves. The good old Matumbo. <laughs> wow. I mean, I get it. You don't want to put more items in your discard, but you're kind of cutting yourself off from attacking next turn. All right. So Max Elixir coming down. That is now four items in the discard. See, and it, would, it would have ended up the same way. He would have discarded <laughs> one item and gotten an energy. <laughs> uh, it's a perpetual five with that choice band on the active as well. Yep, so you can see this is a dreadful matchup for Pedro. Uh, this full-on Rayquaza GX deck with pretty much no other attacking Pokemon. When you run into something like this Buzzwole Garboder deck that's all non-GX Pokemon, uh, that's trying to get a lot of value for one energy attacks and punish your opponent for playing most of the popular cards in the format, uh, you just kind of hit a brick wall. At some point, your opponent... Gets up all these Garboder, uses Trash Lanch, and there's not a lot you can do about it. And there we have it. He takes the knockout. Alessandro promotes the Trubbish, evolves straight away into that Trash Lanch, and guess what? Pedro's at four prizes. Yep, sure is. Basic fighting coming down on that Buzzswoll. Sledgehammer dealing 140 damage right now. That is more than enough to take the knockout here. So just like that, we are tied in prize cards. And, oh, yeah, Shrine of Punishments also came down. Yep. It's going to start chipping away. And uh, guess what? Pedro does not play stadium cards, so if he wants to get rid of it, he's going to have to play an item card to do it. Field Blower. That is kind of a non-combo. <laughs> I think Pedro at this point uh, understands the only way he's going to win is by taking out those Trash Lanch Garboder. Uh, I don't know how many items he has in there right now. It's probably... At least five or six. I think if he even wants to attack this turn, he has to just essentially play all his items down. Yeah, he does have Mysterious Treasure, so he could uh, grab Tapu Lele GX and go for a Guzma. He's got an energy in his hand, so he could Dragon Break to knock out one of those Garboder on the bench. But there's still another one waiting, and then he's got no other energy at play. All right, Max Elixir. Last card does not hit the basic energy. And that is now six items in the discard. Yeah. The damage is just piling up. And at some point, once you get to enough items in your discard, you can just play all of them. Uh, there's no difference between 180 and 380 damage. Uh, it's a knockout either way. It's the enough point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the breaking point, but it's enough point. Mysterious Treasure discarding Puzzle of Time. Yeah. That is now, what, eight items in the discard? Yep. Uh, it is along now, with that field blower. It's now enough. We see Tapu Lele GX probably going to go for, well, actually going to go for Professor Sycamore. I was expecting Guzma 
to go after one of those Garboder, but looks like Pedro doesn't think he can win this game unless he plays Professor Sycamore. Well, he definitely does need to get another Ray charged up. Yeah. I think if, the way this game looks, if he actually attacks with Rayquaza GX and knocks out this Buzzwole, uh, he can't win the game. There's just two trash Lanch ready, and uh, Pedro's just going to lose in two turns. So if he's taking this route, I have to think he's going to pass the turn with that Oranguru active. Or maybe retreat to Mars Shadow in his hand or something. And there we see the Acrobike. It is definitely the dam has been broken. The water is flooding out. Items are coming out of all areas. <laughs> it is uncomfortable. Uh, we see the stormy winds. Going to grab basic energy from yep. the discard pile. It gets to this late point in the game where you actually have to start seeing, okay, do I have lightning energy left? Do I have grass energy left? Yep. We'll probably see... Uh, I don't think he can attack here, but he's going to do it. It just looks like the, you lose the game on board, right? There's two Trash Lanch Garboder ready to attack. There's got to be at least 10 items in the discard. The writing's kind of on the wall, right? Yeah, uh, and he still doesn't even have an attacker for next turn fully powered up. Yeah. yeah it looks like Alessandro is in firm control. The only way I could see Pedro potentially winning is if he somehow played Enhanced Hammer in his deck. I don't think he does. <laughs> Plays a lot of items, but that is not one of them. Yeah, his deck really doesn't have interaction with the opponent without the exception of Marshadow. Yeah, no N. <laughs> Nothing like that. And speaking of N, Alessandro does play one. Uh, kind of just doing it to, say try harder i guess to still put put yourself in a losing position so alessandro did attach choice band which means maybe there weren't enough items that's surprising to me but uh they see the choice band for the knockout and then i think he also could have just attached the choice band so he doesn't draw it off and maybe that's fair it does seem like one way for uh, Pedro to maybe win the game is just bring us something <laughs> and hope it just stays there forever. Yeah, that seems pretty unlikely. Yeah, there's... I, Alessandro hasn't even played much stuff. Look at how much stuff is in his deck. Like, he still has 25 cards, probably. All right, Lily, four, three, four cards. A couple Max Looks are in his hand. The Ultra Ball as well. Yeah, I'm just... I'm wondering if there is, like, a, an actual strategy to what Pedro is doing. Uh, he might be thinking that this is such a bad matchup. Uh, I don't ever plan on winning, <laughs> so... Play it out anyway, see uh, if there's anything I can do. Uh, I'm thinking more along the lines of, let's play out this entire game so that... It, as much time expires as possible, and I can salvage a draw out of this mess. Uh, it doesn't get you into top eight, but it might get you to top 16. Yeah. Uh, it might get you bigger prizes. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a lot of money on the line in this matchup right now. Yeah. Even if you don't make top eight, there's still stuff to be won. He does hit the grass energy off that max elixir, meaning he will be able to make an attack this turn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can... If take he a, wants. <laughs> take a prize. <laughs> Still got two left after that. All right. There we see Let Loose from Marshadow. Another breakout card this tournament. Uh, yeah. Really showing how like useful it is in this Rayquaza deck. Uh, being able to be searched with Mysterious Treasure as well. Yeah. I think that ability has always been pretty good. Of course, it was originally on that Giratina from Platinum. Uh, Let Loose. And... <sighs> All right. So here we just see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tempest oh, nice. going out in style here. Oh, he decked out too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so game number two going to go to Alessandro. Uh, Pedro losing in style. And it looks like we're going to see it deciding game three. Yeah, 21 minutes left to go. Uh, plenty of time for these two very fast decks. Yep. So we saw two games where essentially Alessandro destroyed Pedro. Uh, one 
was uh, an unfortunate deck list error. So Alessandro did lose a game due to that penalty being assessed. But uh, Jeremy, what could Pedro do? Uh, it looks so bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those Pedro fans at home, you just have to hope and pray. Send him all your energy. <laughs> uh, he is going to need it here. He essentially needs Alessandro to start with one Pokemon in like seven energy and just never draw another basic Pokemon. Uh, it could be. He also like could just start a few Pokemon and not really support her and never really get going. Yeah. But it is looking very scary here for Pedro. His tournament life on the line here. Yeah, both of these players fighting for a spot here in the top eight of the most prestigious tournament of the Pokemon TCG season. Uh, these players have battled all season long to make it to this spot. And, you know, hours and hours of playing and traveling and practicing and uh, just so much work going into this. And your season comes down to one game. Yeah, one game and a game that you're fighting an uphill battle, man. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. Uh, Pedro has a decision to make. He has that Zergatry GX, and he decides to start with it. He has that Marshadow with Let Loose as well. Yeah, that is a way to kind of cheese out your opponent. Uh, if you play down a bunch of stuff and then let loose, your opponent only gets four cards. And if they just draw four bad cards, well, that can be it. Yeah. Uh, Trubbish start from Alessandro here. And here we go. Game three action. Two rainbows prized Ooh. on Alessandro's side. That is his only way of attacking with Garbo Order. Wow. Here we see a turn one acrobike from Pedro. <laughs> Tough decision. It looks like a puzzle of time, a Rangaroo here. Acrobike not looking too hot in this <laughs> final round of Swiss. I'm convinced he has never actually played two Puzzle of Time at the same <laughs> time with this deck. There's just no way. All right, Mysterious Treasure discard choice ban. That is already four items in the discard for Pedro. Look, Jeremy, we didn't come here to not take risks <laughs> with Rayquaza. <laughs> and yeah, you see that Zerkatry GX with the flashing head ability. Uh, potentially relevant GX attack as well. Something yeah. <laughs> we didn't mention. Uh, you could use something like Lighting GX. And, oh, he misses. Is there no energy in the discard? Wow, that is rough. Whew. There is the Max Elixir. Finally hits one. And I think it is time, Jeremy. Time to let loose. All right. I unbuckled my belt. <laughs> I am letting loose. Let is, let's go. Draw four cards. It's going to instruct for one. Acrobike again. Oh, does he have another card in hand? He does. Oh, yeah, he could Mysterious Treasure if he wanted to, but no, it looks like... Oh, he's going to Tapu Lele GX. He can uh, grab Lily, draw six cards. Yeah, just keep playing more cards. Uh, he might get nine items in the discard turn one. <laughs> yeah, he's probably already there. <laughs> uh, yeah, he can Lily for six. Uh, try to get an Energy, try to get a Max Elixir, maybe another Rayquaza, and cap it off with that Mars Shadow, let loose. And Alessandro will be left with only a Trubbish. This could be exactly what Pedro needs here. Does he get cards he can play off of <laughs> this? It does not look like it. No, he has he, an energy to attach. Yeah, he played Max Elixir, so he can attach for the turn. Probably played on that float stone somewhere. And here All we right. go. This is going to be the most nerve-wracking four cards of Alessandro's life. I, I'm going to uh, wonder if he's going to kind of hide them from everyone or if he's just going to straight up show us when he draws it. You like. saw Pedro crossing his fingers, <laughs> going, please let this work. This is his only chance, and he knows it. And this is what Rayquaza does. Like, it just can disrupt your opponent. Going first, have them start with four cards in their hand. <laughs> Look at how many items there are. Oof. Oh, man. All right. So Here four, we go. Four cards for Pedro. They're not super relevant. The important thing is whether or not Alessandro draws cards. And well, he's not looking at him, Jeremy. He's not looking at him. He's going to, he wants us to be the first ones to see it on stream. Max Elixir does hit for Pedro. So he has three energy. He has an attacker ready for the next turn. The question is, I, does, does Alessandro saw, have any basic Pokemon? I saw a Pokemon in his hand from the flash, but it might be a Garboder. Oh, he actually retreats to the Rayquaza as well, yeah. kind of fearing a Floatstone or a Field Blower. 
Okay, he's got there. Oh, there's a nest ball. Oh, his I, hand is terrible though. I, I I almost was like, there's no Pokemon, but the nest ball at the very end of his hand keeps him in this game for at least a turn. Yeah, I think you 1,000% have to grab a Ranguru here, uh, instruct for probably one card, and hope it's another basic Pokemon or a supporter. I don't know. He's uh, going through his deck pretty fast. Is a Ranguru in the prizes? Oh, is it? I think I think it is. Oh no. So he does have a rainbow and a trash. Oh my, a Rangaroo is in the prizes with both of those rainbow energies. This game is not going well for Alessandro and it's only turn one. Yeah, so the good news for him is two of the cards in his hand are trash lance, Garboder, and a rainbow energy. So he's gonna pass this turn, kind of play like he doesn't have anything. And if Pedro can't power up another Rayquaza GX, we could see one trash lance, Garboder sweep Pedro's entire field. Oh, he draws Rescue Stretcher, though. That's huge. You can get back a Rayquaza. Yeah, and that could just mitigate exactly what you were worried about. He's got a hidden energy, though. There's none in his discard. There it is, the Ooh. top card. Two more items also hitting the bin. Oh, that yeah. does not matter right now, though. Energy for turn, and then probably see an Instruct here for one. <laughs> All that's in his discard are items, and then, like, two supporters. <laughs> All right, there's just the Sycamore discarding his hand, drawing seven. <laughs> He's got another Marshadow. Finds a Max Elixir. That's huge. That gets him to four energy in play. There we go. On the following turn. Max Elixir. Oh, boy. So Alessandro knows at this point, if he doesn't top deck a way to get a basic Pokemon, he's done. Um, yeah. He can knock out this one Rayquaza, Rayquaza GX, but he'll have nothing left on the bench. So this is the biggest top deck of this game. Does he All find right. another basic? Let's see what it is. He's, I, can't, I haven't seen it yet. He, I don't know. <laughs> He's hamming it up. Oh, man. It's a choice ban. Oh, no. That is it. Pedro Eugenio Torres. Oh, my steals goodness. Steals one. Let loose for the win, and Alessandro is devastated. <sighs> a 4-0 start to end up like this. And Pedro cannot believe it. He stole a game from his <laughs> Look opponent. Look at that smile.